Welcome back to Behind the Headlines, where we break down the most critical issues shaping Kenya today. I'm your host, Anthony, and in this episode, we are diving deep into the new higher education funding model introduced by President William Ruto earlier this year. The education sector in Kenya has been facing significant challenges, massive enrollment numbers, insufficient funding, and the financial strain on both students and institutions. The government's solution? A radical shift in how universities and technical and vocational education training, TVET, institutions are funded. But what does this really mean for students, families, and the future of higher education in Kenya? Let's find out. The old funding model, known as the Differentiated Unit Cost, DUC, allocated block funding directly to universities based on the courses they offered. This was a one-size-fits-all approach that didn't take into account the financial needs of individual students. As a result, many students from disadvantaged backgrounds struggled to afford higher education, while universities were left grappling with financial shortfalls due to inadequate funding. Enter the new model unveiled by President Ruto in May 2023. This model shifts the focus from institutions to students. Now, funding follows the student, and it's based on financial need. Instead of blanket capitation, students receive a mix of scholarships, loans, and household contributions, with the level of support determined by a means testing instrument, MTI. This tool assesses a student's financial background and places them in one of five categories or bands, which dictates how much support they'll receive. Let's delve into how these bands work. Band 1. This is for students from the most vulnerable backgrounds, families earning less than KSH 5,995 per month. They receive up to 95% of their tuition fees covered through a combination of scholarships and loans. Band 2. For families earning between K Shreden Owain Shtan of 5,995 and K 23,670 monthly, students here get about 70% of their tuition funded. Band 3. This covers families earning between KHJH 23,671 and KHH 70,000. Here, about 50% of tuition is covered. Band 4. Middle income families earning between KSH 70,000 and KSH 120,000 must contribute more, with only 30% of tuition covered by loans and the rest by household contributions. Band 5. Finally, for high income families earning above KSH 120,000, the students receive minimal government support, just about 30% in loans. This system is designed to ensure that students from the most disadvantaged backgrounds receive the most support, leveling the playing field. However, it also means that those in higher income brackets will need to dig deeper into their pockets to fund their children's education. While the new funding model is a bold move towards equity, it hasn't been without its controversies. One significant issue is the exclusion of students who sat for their KCSE before 2022. These students remain under the old funding system, which many argue is unfair. There are also concerns about the impact on private universities, as students in these institutions only qualify for loans, not scholarships, raising questions about equity across the board. Moreover, the shift from institution-based funding to student-centered funding has financial implications for universities. Without the block funding they used to receive, universities are now more reliant on the fees paid by students. This could lead to financial strain, particularly for institutions that enroll a large number of students from higher income families who may opt for private education or international universities. The government, however, is confident that this new model will solve many of the long-standing issues in Kenya's higher education sector. President Ruto has emphasized that this model allocates more than 80% of tuition funds to students from needy families, ensuring that they can continue their education without financial barriers, nation. Furthermore, this model is expected to promote transparency and accountability as universities are now required to disclose the actual costs of their programs. This move should allow students to make more informed decisions about where to study and what to study. 
As we move forward, it's clear that the success of this new funding model will depend on its implementation and the ability of universities to adapt to the new financial landscape. Will this model truly make higher education more accessible and equitable, or will it widen the gap between the rich and the poor? Only time will tell. For students and parents navigating this new system, it's crucial to understand the funding options available and apply early to secure the financial support they need. The application process is online through the Higher Education Financing HF, portal, where students can apply for both scholarships and loans. That's all for Behind the Headlines today. Subscribe.